McPherson Square Park, often referred to as Needle Park, holds a well-known reputation. However, unbeknownst to many, there is an old building nestled atop the hill, a public library. This library holds significance beyond its mere existence, for countless individuals, it serves as a beacon of last hope. The moniker Needle Park has persisted for a considerable duration, surpassing my own lifespan. Regrettably, the presence of needles and drug-related activities within the park hampers the intended use for children, teenagers, and adults alike, rendering it an arduous task to enjoy its amenities. At times, it even poses a threat to safety when traversing towards the library. During my efforts to clean up needles at the park, I have witnessed the unsettling behavior of drug users in McPherson. They heedlessly insert needles into the grass, with their sharp tips facing upwards, thereby heightening the risk of accidental stabbings. Disturbingly, one can come across bloodied needles wedged into trees or concealed beneath the playground equipment, accompanied by the unsanitary presence of human feces. However, thanks to the collaborative efforts of parks and recreation, as well as other dedicated groups, a fenced enclosure with secured locks now safeguards the playground, mitigating these hazards. Fear gripped me as I found myself in an unfamiliar place, cold and alone on the concrete streets. People hurried by, oblivious to my presence. This was my new reality, the one no one warned me about when I first chased that initial high. I had thought it was heroin, the drug everyone seemed to be on. Little did I know that the streets had changed after 2010. Fentanyl had infiltrated every corner of the drug scene, taking over as the main substance of choice. Fentanyl wasn't something I had ever intended to use. I was a hard-working individual, waking up each day to go to work. But one fateful decision changed everything. As the fentanyl coursed through my veins, a heat unlike anything I had ever experienced consumed my body and soul. In that moment, I felt an intense love for my wife, as if time would never cease. Day turned into night, and I found myself in a world where I had control. With every touch. I could feel the air around me, perceiving the world through the lens of fentanyl's throne. If only I hadn't made that choice to use fentanyl, I wouldn't be here now, sleeping on the streets. Kensington Avenue, a place where the unwanted souls gather, has become a living hell where each person is sentenced to their addiction, one by one. I still had ten more bags of fentanyl with me as the night rushed forward, not waiting for me. I was now compelled to chase after that high every four hours to avoid the agony of withdrawal, a truth that no one tells you. After three days of using fentanyl, your body becomes dependent on it. I tried countless times to break free from fentanyl's grip, but the rising pain within me always drove me back to seek another high. The stories I heard on the streets confirmed the challenge of escaping the clutches of this drug. Those who attempted to leave fentanyl often met a tragic end, joining the ranks of the lost souls of Kensington. In the midst of the chaos, I needed to reconnect with the innocent boy I once was, the boy who loved himself and not the world. I longed to rediscover that self-love. I had lost everything, and amidst the cacophony of demons screaming and others vying for the best fentanyl bag, I knew I had to escape their clutches. If only someone could hear my plea for help and guide me out of this living nightmare. I yearned for a miracle, but I was trapped in the harsh reality of addiction. Then, at 12.32 a.m., a young man began preaching about Jesus, proclaiming him as the path to a new life. He walked from one corner of the street to another, his words falling on deaf ears, except mine. I hesitated, trembling with fear, but deep inside, I mustered the courage to extend my hand and silently cry out for God's intervention. Help me, show me the way. The young man noticed my gaze among the countless others lost in their pursuit of drugs. He approached me and asked, Would you like to go to a drug recovery program in Florida? Without hesitation, I answered with a resounding yes. I confessed my fear that I wouldn't make it without drugs, and he assured me that he understood. He had once been where I was, trapped in this vicious cycle. Someone had helped him escape, and now he was extending a lifeline to me. He offered me money to secure transportation to the recovery program. I couldn't wait to discover what lay ahead. If you want to know the rest of my story, follow along in our videos.